listening to the Holy Bible One Year Challenge with master storyteller Michael Wood, featuring the easy to read version and used by permission from Bible Week International. Enjoy the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 304. In the Old Testament, we will read the entire book of Obadiah. I'll give a detailed introduction in just a moment. And in the New Testament, we're continuing in the book of Hebrews. The following chapter summary is written by shmup.com. Hebrews chapter 2, it's all about being human. Okay, so God's son is super important. That's why his followers need to pay really close attention to what they've been taught about him. Otherwise, they might start getting a little lazy about this whole following God thing. And no one wants that. After all, says Hebrews, God gave the world the Torah, which is the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, to tell us to expect his son. And the Jewish prophets backed him up. Then God showed off by letting all kinds of miracles happen to show the truth. Finally, he went and gave the world the Holy Spirit. Message received, God. A quick side note. Folks who believe that Jesus is the Son of God tend to interpret the Hebrew Bible, or Old Testament, as a precursor of the New Testament. They believe that parts of the Hebrew Bible predict the birth and story of Jesus, and that the New Testament is basically a fulfillment of the Old. But folks who just use the Hebrew Bible, namely Jews, would argue that Christians are projecting this reading onto the scripture where it doesn't exist. When the world needed a savior, did God send an angel? Nope. Yeah, this point is really being hammered home. He sent his son. Oh, did we mention? His name is Jesus. Even though Jesus is totally equal with God, there was a time when he was made lower than the angels and became a human being. After he suffered and died, see the Gospels for the full story there, Jesus got all kinds of glory and honor from God. Way to make the old man proud. He also performed a pretty neat little trick. When he died, Jesus, quote, tasted death for everyone, quote. Sounds delicious? Basically, that just means that by suffering and dying, Jesus became perfect and was able to show the rest of the world how to perfectly follow God as well. All in a day's work for the Savior of the world, we guess. But why do it? Well, Jesus and the rest of the world have one dad. God. That means every single human being is like Jesus' brother or sister. Jesus needed to save God's children, so he became just like them. For example, uh, i.e., flesh and blood. He died just like regular people so that he could drop kick the devil, uh, figuratively, of course, and make it so that no one ever had to be afraid of dying again. Remember, Jesus didn't come to help the angels, he came to help people. That's why he became a human being and not an angel. Sorry, angels. Jesus became like a Jewish high priest who made a sacrifice for all the people. In this case, the sacrifice wasn't a ram or a goat. It was himself. Since Jesus lived and suffered and died just like humans do, says Hebrews, he totally feels people's pain when they got a problem. If you enjoy the show, visit me at patreon.com forward slash storymaster. You'll find the link in the description box below. By contributing as little as $1 per month, you will enable me to continue this ministry. And you'll get cool rewards too. Together, we're going to get through the Bible in one year. Let's get started. Obadiah, an introduction. Obadiah is the shortest book in the Old Testament. In just 21 verses, it delivers a message of both warning and hope. The Edomites were neighbors of the Israelites. In fact, they both had the same ancestor, Abraham's son, Isaac. So the Edomites and the Israelites were related, but Edom did not act like family when Judah suffered invasion by the Babylonian army in 586 BC. The people of Edom did not help Judah. They did not do what family members or neighbors should do. Instead, they laughed at the Israelites and stole from them. At a time when the people of Judah could not defend themselves, 
Edom caused them even more harm. In this short book, Obadiah warns the Edomites that God will punish them. He says that God will destroy them because they hurt their neighbors instead of helping them. He tells them that in the future, their land will belong to Judah. But Obadiah also gives hope to the people in Judah. He tells them that God will not abandon them, but will defend them. The book of Obadiah says that the Lord will punish Edom. Then Edom was wrong to harm the people of Israel. And then that the Lord will destroy Israel's enemies. And finally, that Israel will get more land. Let's get started. Obadiah chapter 1. Edom will be punished. This is the vision of Obadiah. This is what the Lord God says about Edom. We heard a report from the Lord. A messenger was sent to the nations. He said, let's get ready and go to war against Edom. The Lord speaks to Edom. Listen, Listen Edom, I will make you the weakest of nations. People will consider you worth nothing. Your pride has fooled you into feeling safe. You live in those caves high on the cliff. Your home is high in the hills. So you say to yourself, No one can bring me to the ground. Edom will be brought low. But even if you fly high like an eagle and put your nest among the stars, I will bring you down, says the Lord. If thieves come at night and rob you, they take only what they need. If workers gather grapes in your vineyards, they always leave some fruit on the vines. But you, Edom, will have nothing left. The enemy will search hard for Esau's hidden treasures, and they will find them all. All those who are your friends will force you out of the land. Those who are at peace with you, who will trick you and defeat you. Those who were your trusted companions are planning a trap for you, and you will not know it until it happens. On that day, says the Lord, I will destroy the wise people throughout Edom. I will destroy all the clever people from the mountain of Esau. Taman, your brave soldiers, will be afraid. Everyone will be destroyed from the mountain of Esau. Many people will be killed. You will be covered with shame because you are cruel to your brother Jacob. So you will be destroyed completely. You join the enemies of Israel. Strangers carried Israel's treasures away. Foreigners entered Israel's city gate and drew lots to divide Jerusalem between them. You were with them, waiting to get your share. You should not have laughed at your brother's trouble. You should not have been happy when they destroyed Judah. You should not have boasted while they were suffering. You should not have entered the city gate of my people and laughed at their troubles. You should not have taken their treasures at the time of their distress. You should not have waited at the crossroads to kill those who were trying to escape. You should not have captured those who escaped alive. The day of the Lord is coming soon to all the nations. And the evil you did to others will happen to you. The same bad things will fall down on your own head. You spilled blood on my holy mountain, so other nations will spill your blood. You will be finished. It will be as if you never existed. But there will be survivors on Mount Zion. They will be my special people. The descendants of Jacob will take back what belongs to them. The people of Jacob will be like a fire. The people of Joseph will be like a flame. But the nation of Esau will be like ashes. The people of Judah will burn Edom and they will destroy it. Then there will be no survivors in the nation of Esau. This will happen because the Lord said it would. Then people from the Negev will live on the mountain of Esau, and people from the foothills will take the Philistine lands. 
He will live in the land of Ephraim and Samaria. Gilead will belong to Benjamin. The people from Israel who were taken from their homeland will take back the land of Canaan all the way to Zarephath. The people of Jerusalem who were taken as captives to Sepharad will take back the cities of the Negev. The winners will go up on Mount Zion to rule the people who live on Esau's mountain. And the kingdom will belong to the Lord. Hebrews chapter 2. Our salvation is greater than the law. So we must be careful to follow what we were taught. We must not let anything slowly pull us away from the truth we heard. The teaching that God spoke through angels was shown to be true. Every time his people did something against that teaching, they were punished for what they did. They were punished when they did not obey that teaching. So surely we also will be punished if we don't pay attention to the salvation we have that is so great. It was the Lord Jesus who first told people about it, and those who heard him proved to us that it is true. God also proved it by using miraculous signs, wonders, and all kinds of miracles. And he proved it by giving people various gifts through the Holy Spirit in just the way he wanted. God did not choose angels to be the rulers over the new world that was coming. That future world is the world we have been talking about. There is a scripture that says, Why are people so important to you? Why do you even think about them? Why do you care about the Son of Man? Is he so important? For a short time you made him lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor. You put everything under his control. If God put everything under his control, then there was nothing left that he did not rule. But we don't yet see him ruling over everything. For a short time, Jesus was made lower than the angels. But now we see him wearing a crown of glory and honor because he suffered and died. Because of God's grace, Jesus died for everyone. God wanted many people to be his children and share his glory. And he had just the right way to make this happen because he is the one who made everything and still controls it all. So he made Jesus a perfect savior through his suffering to lead God's children to salvation. Jesus, the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are from the same family. So he is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. He said, God, I will tell my brothers and sisters about you before all your people, I will sing your praises. He also says, I will trust in God. And he said, Here I am with the children God has given me. These children are people with physical bodies, so Jesus himself became like them and had the same experiences they had. Jesus did this so that by dying, he could destroy the one who has the power of death the devil. Jesus became like these people and died so that he could free them. They were like slaves all their lives because of their fear of death. Clearly, it is not angels that Jesus helps. He helps the people who are from Abraham. For this reason, Jesus had to be made like us, his brothers and sisters in every way. He became like us so that he could represent us before God a merciful and faithful high priest. Then he could offer sacrifice to take away people's sins. Yes, because he himself suffered and was tempted, he can now help those who are tempted. Proverbs chapter 26, verses 13 to 22. A person who is lazy and wants to stay at home says, what if there is a lion out there? Really, there might be a lion in the street. Like a door on its hinges, a lazy man turns back and forth on his bed. Lazy people are too lazy to lift the food from their plates to their mouths. 
lazy people think they are seven times smarter than the people who really have good sense. To step between two people arguing is as foolish as going out into the street and grabbing a stray dog by the ears. Anyone who would trick someone and then say, I was only joking, is like a fool who shoots flaming arrows into the air and accidentally kills someone. Without wood, a fire goes out. Without gossip, arguments stop. Charcoal keeps the coals glowing, wood keeps the fire burning, and troublemakers keep arguments alive. People love to hear gossip. It is like tasty food on its way to the stomach. Thank you, everyone. That was day 304. Join us for day 305. We will begin the book of Joel, from which I will give a detailed introduction. And then we will continue in the book of Hebrews, where in chapter 3, the author tells us not to be like the Israelites. What does that mean, really? Well, you'll have to join us to find out. We hope you enjoyed today's verses. Be sure to leave us a positive review and to share this podcast with your friends and family. Please join us for the next episode as we experience the Bible in one year. Did you know we offer online courses in creative writing, literature, and web design? Visit us at storymaster.online to learn more.